Good morning, Wednesday morning, heading now to Tel Aviv, to Sorota, for a marathon of back-to-back meetings, starting with Yara Cohen, who is the CMO of a new company called Empathy.com, followed by a meeting with Noah Greenfield, who is, I don't know, I've known her for many years, an amazing marketer, and now she works at Next Insurance, then Becky Strap from APAC, and just meeting after meeting all day with amazing people. Super pumped. Here we go. to Tel Aviv parking. I circled for around 35 minutes till I found parking. But it looks like I'm gonna make it on time to my nine o'clock meeting, which starts in four minutes. Beautiful, beautiful day in Tel Aviv. Perfection. And no more masks, baby. Okay, bright and early in Sorona. I have a back-to-back marathon of meetings today. But this is my first one, and I have to say, I'm super, like, not comprehending how we've never met before from, like, 85 different directions. We'll talk about that. I have to say the reason I heard, and we'll talk about what the IRA does in a second, the reason I heard of this company is because one of my favorite entrepreneurs in Israel, Ron Gura, who's Eyal Gura's brother, who's the chairman of Zebra Medical, one of the most incredible companies. Ron was head of product or head of technology. What was his job? Head of product. Head of product that we were. Uh, before that, he sold this company, the gift project, to eBay, right? The guy's just like, whatever he touches turns to gold, but more importantly, the guy's a mega mensch, like the nicest guy in the world, I love the guy. So I read, I think on TechCrunch, is it TechCrunch? Mm-hmm. TechCrunch, boss company. Yeah, it was everywhere, right. Wherever you want. Who wrote it about this company, Harry? Kraken? You know? uh, I don't remember the name. Okay, so I heard about this company called Empathy.com. First of all, the domain, like holy hell, that's the most incredible domain ever. But second of all, it's Ron Guru's company, and I was like, I gotta hear more. So we raised capital, and it's already get, you know, getting going, and I'm actually very mad at Ron. Ron, not okay that you didn't tell me, because, <laughs> because, number one, it's his company, but number two, not to get too heavy in the morning, but it's a platform to support bereaved families, people that lost a loved one, uh, which is clearly very relevant for me. So I said to Ron, I'm like, what the heck? How have you not told me about this? So long story short, someone tagged the IRAN, said she's the head of marketing. I'm like, we got to meet. That's that's the, the, the background. Tell me about you. Where are you from? What's your story? Give me the give me the uh, right elevator pitch. Okay, I grew up in Jerusalem. I did the whole yep neighbors. right by your, right by your parents. Uh, the nice little back of pizza. Did the whole Jerusalem startup thing. Had my own startup back in the day. Um, found myself here in Tel Aviv at a different startup um, called S'more. Of course, did the whole Shmore Never Time thing uh, before that. Shmore Never Time, as you, I'm sure you guys know, by 8200s, the intelligence unit, like every single entrepreneur in this country comes from. Anyway, go on. And then I found also myself um, here at Empathy, where we were just getting started, but we're working very hard to really change the way society talks about loss and the services that families get to help them cope through it. Because it's not just about the grief, it's not just about the emotional and dealing with that, but really there's so many really difficult, practical, logistical, financial, legal challenges that families face, and they're alone. They don't have the information, they don't have the clarity, they don't get to have the peace of mind, and it's a year and a half worth of paperwork that we're helping them through step by step and really just sort of being that companion that's there for them. And now that we've launched V1, that is all about peace of mind and companionship, we're working on drilling down to each individual challenge and figuring out how we can make it easier with tech. So for example, you need to cancel your Comcast account or your T-Mobile account. That's a lose-lose for both people on either side of the conversation because there is no upsell here. Somebody has passed away, you're not interested in an upsell. But it's still going to take you 20 minutes, lots of dialing, lots of waiting, lots of frustration when you barely want to get out of bed right, exactly. to cancel this account. Well, so how can we doing figure right out, now. like, why is this still a thing? Right. Why are we in the 21st century and it's still like 1950 where you have a list of 100 accounts to cancel, 100 phone calls to make, and so many bad decisions that you don't know how to avoid along the way. Wow. Incredible, incredible. So, you know, again, like I said to you before, uh, unfortunately, I'm your target audience and there are so many things, so many things that I learned in my morning process that A, I never knew, but B, like, I feel like people need to know. And I just gave you one example of 
what to, what to say to someone, right? So what's the normal thing? How do you greet someone? Usually you say, hey, how are you? When someone lost a loved one, saying how are you, while it seems trivial, is the worst question. How do I answer that? My brother was just murdered. How am I? I'm great. I'm crappy. Like, don't ask me that question. And so I spoke to you about option B, Charles Sandberg's book, which it, 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 I literally, I'm only slightly exaggerating when I say it saved my life, but the one thing, among many other things, the one thing that really, really stuck out to me that she said in the book, someone called her and said, what don't you want on your hamburger? Which is, to me, such a huge deal. Why? People are calling me all the time after my brother was killed and saying, you know, what do you want for lunch? You know, what, what can I do for you? And I'm like, I can't make decisions. I don't want to make any decisions. And someone calls and says, I'm getting you a hamburger. What don't you want on it? There's, there's such a difference between what do you want for lunch, you know? So these are things that you only learn from experience. What to say, what not to say. And like you said, head logistics. And like, if someone just died, the last thing I want to do is spend hours on the phone canceling their account. Like you said, there has to be a better way. And so that's what you guys are building. We're not going to talk about the sensitive topic of how much that domain costs, but holy hell, that is the most amazing <laughs> domain but ever. But I will go back to what you said before, and that really is the difference between empathy and sympathy. Because sympathy is, I'm looking at your grief and it makes me uncomfortable. So I'm sympathetic, but I really, I'm, I'm uncomfortable about, about, about the whole situation. I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll get you flowers that's not very helpful to you. And empathy is really just sort of being in that discomfort and being there for the person who's going through this difficult thing and trying to figure out what's going to be helpful for you. And that's really the vision of the app of helping with all that practical stuff, with all of the things that you need. And, and obviously it's messy because life is messy. So there's also some grief content and also just the way all of it is structured really keeps in mind that people are in a sensitive place and we work with world-renowned grief experts um, in creating the content and building the story around it and really being sensitive to what people are going through. But yeah, absolutely, lots of challenges ahead. Yeah. Who designed the app? I'm curious. Uh, we had a really great design agency in uh, Denmark. Beautiful um, We have really amazing in-house designers. It's amazing. It, it really, my first, the first word that popped into my head when I downloaded it was playful. And that's exactly what I need. When I'm down, you know, give, me, give me something pleasant to use, not, you know, so, so I'm, I'm super excited about what you guys are doing. And again, I don't know how we haven't met till now, but I'm glad we did. And it goes without saying, that's like the funniest expression, it goes without saying, because whenever someone says it goes without saying, they're about to say it, you know? It's like, no offense, but mm -hmm. offend me, right? So it goes without saying <laughs> that if there's ever anything I can do to help you, you know, with this company, with anything else, whatever it is, intros, brainstorming session, whatever it is, Ron knows me for a long time, he knows I'm being genuine, you'll learn that I'm being genuine, but I mean it, take me up on the offer, anything I can do to help, really, anything. I'll send you some CVs today, you know, I think that, uh, like I said to someone just now, you know, you, no one can know if a startup will succeed, right? Anybody who tells you this startup's gonna be, you know, is an idiot, fire them. But there are some companies that you meet that you just know. I met Lemonade when it was, wasn't even launched yet. Shai showed me the app and I was like, okay, this is, the chances of this company not succeeding are like close to zero. It's such a beautiful app, such a massive space, just ripe for disruption. Here, like you said, it's, it's 1950 in terms of the way people feel about death. Everyone's so uncomfortable, no one wants to talk about it. The last thing I would expect from an insurance company is to have a beautiful app, just like the last thing I would expect from an insurance company is to have hot pink as my color, right? Same thing with death. The last thing I would expect is to have a beautifully designed app that gives me a really amazing user experience and it's there for me. And that's what you guys are building and it's incredible. So. I'm gonna let you go, I know you gotta go, but listen, take me up on the offer, anything I can do to help, uh, yeah, and just keep kicking butt. Will awesome do. to meet you, definitely, like, we need to have, you know, more meetings, we'll uh, do to make more. up for lost time, you know? I'm around. All right, so, thank you. Okay, second meeting of the day. First of all, you know, I gotta say something, I don't know if you agree with this, but I, from my experience, I feel like the whole diversity thing of women in tech, is, I think we're really making progress. I just looked at my day today, there, I'm meeting some real female powerhouses, like, I'm not, I'm not, we're not there yet. There's some badass women in the industry, we need more. Hold on, I'm not disagreeing with you, but okay. it's a lot better than it was five years ago. Yes, absolutely. Something to be proud of. Okay. Yes. How long do we know each other? I want to say like 10 years. Oh, so the last time we hung out, literally, like, the last time we hung out, right? Ken. The class yeah. is USA. Yes. So by the way, I, I know it's, your, it's not your role right now, it's one sentence. Like, class is USA, from my perspective, is the biggest enigma of the Israeli business sector. Glasses USA is first of all, just in terms of the domain, you would never expect to be in Israel. And second of all, what are they, the <laughs> second biggest glasses we tell online yeah, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. You're sitting here in Israel, it's wild, like unbelievable. So we met back then, you were head of marketing, what was your role there? Uh, VP you know, of marketing, marketing communication, okay. yeah. So you hooked up with some glasses, I met I you, did. I met the founder, it was nice. You joined, I don't even know how to describe this company other than saying rocket ship. It's a rocket ship. Yeah. Just from a purely, not that this is a metric, purely from a valuation perspective, okay? You work at Next Insurance, which we'll talk about in a second, but purely from a valuation perspective, this company went from basically nothing. When did it launch? What year? Four years ago. Four years ago. 
to one billion to two billion, and the latest round, a couple weeks ago, yeah, four billion dollar valuation, which is freaking bonkers. In addition, some of your investors are literally the best in the business, but Adobe Francis and like who's your who's your lead? Capital G, Munich, three, yeah. the biggest names, the biggest names. Yeah. Why is that? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch. I'm gonna do your job, and then, and then I'm gonna let you talk a little. <laughs> to me. There are some industries that are just begging to be disrupted. So 10 years ago, it was transportation, it was hospitality, it was uh, communication. All those things are game over. Uber, you know, the, the VCs that didn't invest in Uber didn't miss out on an opportunity, they missed out on a market, right? Airbnb, Uber, these, these yeah. markets are done, okay? Social media, it's all done, finished. There are some industries, not that many, but there are some that are just begging. One of them is insurance. Think about it. When I say insurance, what is your first association? Oh, insurance. Yuck. Exactly. Yuck. Yuck. Perfect. Uh, Heavy, old fashioned, like just the opposite. Hassle, got next 100%. to taxes, 100%. things like that that you hate to do. It's an interesting, interesting analogy. Yeah. So no, no one likes insurance companies. And I said to you before, at best people are indifferent to them. It's a, it's, a, it's a commodity. I don't care if I work with this insurance company, nobody cares. But the bottom line is we have technology today that that is not justified. No matter what, you, you, you need to optimize you know, this industry for the way people behave. And so obviously, you know, Lemonade's a company in this space, not a competitor because they're different types of insurance. They announced car insurance yesterday. But next insurance is the leading small business insurance. And just one more thing and then I'm gonna let you talk. You guys announced a couple of weeks ago that you're partnering with Amazon, yeah. which is astronomical. All right, talk to me, what is next insurance? What's, what's the elevator pitch? I mean, you said it. First it's of all, what's your name? I didn't even ask you what your name is. Tell people your name. Who are you? Noah Greenfield. Noah. Okay. Head of brand at Next Insurance. Are you American originally? Uh, half of my life I lived there, so I'm kind of half and half. I feel like I asked you this last time you met. Your English is like perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's good. Okay. I, I love the U.S. It's a part of my life. Don't leave. I'm, I'm here, but I'm kind of juggling. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm doing I, I won't allow it. <laughs> it's vetoed. That's it. No, you're not leaving. Okay, so what's Next Insurance? So next insurance, just like you said, um, it's a hassle to buy insurance and I think our founders were at a point where they were small business owners and they said, this sucks, we want to change that, let's take this industry and make it better. So at the end of the day, we're helping these entrepreneurs, we're taking something that they hate, they want to be their own boss, they want to inspire people, they want to do their things, what do they know about insurance? Nothing. Why do they have to feel like this is like such a heavy thing why do they have to pay so much money so we're taking all these types of businesses and it doesn't matter whether you're like in construction fitness if you're a clown if you're a video editor we have like over a thousand types of different businesses and we help them um, when you say small when you say it's SMB that's your target yes. what size like house falafel stand yes yes retail actually is really really strong it can be a donut shop a, really? a biker shop okay, yeah so just walk me through the product a little bit like it's a mobile app it's a platform, what is it? So it's an online service at the end of the day. You can do it from your desktop or your mobile device. Right. We do have like an amazing customer service team, like professional agents. You still need to talk to someone. Right. But the big thing is that you can do everything online, whether you're on a job site, whether it's like the weekend, it doesn't matter. It's like your hours, your convenience. You don't have to call anyone, you don't have to fax. If you need a certificate of insurance, which is a big thing like to show that you're able to do a job, it's all online. Right. You need to change things. Yeah, it's it is, amazing it took this long. It's amazing it took this long, and it's amazing that people had to kind of suffer and wait two weeks to, to get something. Like, it doesn't make sense today. It's totally crazy. But uh, to, yeah. again, to be clear, um, Lemonade is not your competitor, right? No. Because, no. uh, so like, you know, they're, one of their biggest claims to fame, I remember at the time, is someone lost their leather jacket. You heard this story? Someone lost their leather jacket, and they filed a claim on Lemonade, and within seconds, the money yeah. was in the account. Yeah, I heard that story. Yeah, and, and I think they're amazing. They're doing a great job. And I actually think this is very helpful that all these different companies kind of help people understand that you can consume insurance in a different way. So, I mean, I like to say, you know, you guys are basically Uberizing insurance. What do I mean yeah, by that? I do, I, I, yeah. You say that also? Like, yeah, what do I mean by that? You know, the point is, before Uber, and, I, and I've spoken to some of Uber's early investors, and like, you know, when Travis came and pitched them, they understood that for Uber to succeed, they literally have to make, like, laws change, right? They said this guy had fire in his eyes. It was clear he was going to do it. And again, the ones that say no, said no to Uber lost that on an entire market. And so Uber basically took something that always existed, transportation, and said, that's it. Gone are the days where trans transportation is primitive. 
we're gonna we're gonna make a whole new standard, a whole new kind of behavior that didn't exist before. And that's the same thing with insurance. Insurance always existed in one way or another, but it's like you said, it's primitive, it's archaic, and people just don't like it. So you guys are taking technology and you're basically Uberizing the whole thing. I love yeah. it. Yeah, anyway, redefining it completely. Love it. I love it. Yeah. So I, I mentioned to you before that uh, Dovi Francis, one of your investors, brought me on like a road show in, uh, in Silicon Valley, yeah. LA, whatever. And uh, I think Next was one of the first companies that uh, that I visited. And we did a video. I don't know if you saw it. But yeah, yeah, I did. I was blown away. Absolutely yeah. blown away. And since then, by the way, it's only gotten more crazy, even crazier, because some of the people you hired, like Efrat Dagan, who's the lead recruiter at Google, one of the first employees at Google Israel. Mm -hmm. By the way, Effie Fuchs. Yeah. Who's my love him. De Milim. Really? Don't ask him what kind of soldier I was. <laughs> don't ask him. I don't want. <laughs> okay. I didn't like the arm. Let's just say that. But no, he was, he's a good guy. But uh, this no, he's amazing. Incredible talent on the company. It's a, it's a rocket ship. The valuation, no matter how you want to look at it, the, the quantity, the quality of money that you've raised, it's just. It's, it's, but I want to tell you something. Yes. You're right about all those things. But I think what matters the most, yes. when we read the reviews of what our customers are saying about us, that to me says love it. everything. I and love by it. the way, yes. we get an email. All the company, all the employees, for every single review that we get, really? we all that's read it. Awesome. Yes. That is really, really cool. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's like I've never heard any company say that before. That's like a really good idea. People should feel proud of what we they're building. We want to know what every Love single that. customer thinks about us. What is the experience? Incredible. It's amazing. And when Love you know, it. it's 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 so awesome. What's the website? Nextinsurance.com. Nextinsurance.com. Beautiful. Check out the, the site. Check out the, the company. We do actually, we, we do have nextinsurance.com slash careers, I will say that. Okay. You are hiring all the time. Yes, all the time. But all mostly the there or mostly here or both? Both, both, both. both. We're right. growing rapidly. Off the everywhere. top of your head, you know any specific positions that you guys are looking to fill right now? A lot of developers. Of awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. No, listen. Anything that I can do to help. You know that. Yes, I say, do. Like, know. When I meet with people who've never met me before and I say they're like, What's the catch? You know there's no catch. No, there's no catch. If I can help no with anything, just really. help. You just help. Behind the scenes, like nobody, again, anything I can help, you let me know. And I'm, I, listen, when I saw that you joined the company, I was like, perfect fit. Perfect. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, you can close your ears because I know you're you're very tsnua, you're very like <laughs> modest, but I often talk about Israel's weakest link and it's marketing. And I can probably count on, if I'm being nice, three hands, people that are on your level in terms of marketing. Like there's Omar you know, Shai at Wix, there's Ghana Vahami at Apps Flyer. There are some people, but the Dim. And and I'm, gonna, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm gonna pull the female card for one second. Female marketers are at your level? Maybe in this entire country, maybe five. Maybe. Flat Phoenix on like there's there's some some of them. Like on your level, not many. And so you know I was super I'm happy. Blushing. Thank uh, you. Super happy to have you guys that you joined this company. It's yeah, a lot of years me. of hard work, yeah. You're gonna let me know if I can help with anything, yeah? Thank you, you're yes. Gonna, are you gonna take me up on my offer or are you just saying yes? No no no. I will definitely take you up on this offer. I, 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 I do. I'm gonna yeah. give you some ideas. Yes, you play do. with. You do. Alright, so we're gonna be in touch. Let's not wait another five years till our next meeting. Um, and I know you can't even ask you for swag. I have next insurance, but you can't even send me glasses. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, you're ashamed of yourself. <laughs> anyway, no, good luck with everything. How long have you been at the company, by the way? Um, two years. Two years, amazing. Amazing, super awesome. Be in touch, let me know if you need help, and I'm looking forward to our next meeting. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, though. Awesome. Incredible morning that was. Heading now to Memphis Burger. It's been a while. To meet my sister from another mister, Becky Strap, who works at APAC, who is one of the most awesome people that I know. She actually introduced me to Memphis Burger years ago. Anyway, pumped to see her and pumped to eat Memphis Burger. My challenge is to get it on camera before I uh, consume the food. I always forget because it's so good. But uh, And hopefully I'll get her on camera as well. Maybe not, she's not exactly, a little camera shy, but I'll try my best. was James Oppenheim, the founder of uh, Bodega, a restaurant here that makes American style burgers with all kinds of crazy toppings. It's a great place. I love it, although nothing beats Memphis. Heading to Memphis right here, baby. Love it. Sure. Taller than me, man. I'm going now to meet Shlomo Mervis, the CEO of Intelligo, in a restaurant in Beit Shemesh. I never take night meetings, but when Shlomo asks, I show up. What are you up to, Tzvi? A lot of school. Yeah, and where are you going now? I'm going to work. 
Why do you work so much? Is that like it? Why? Stam, I mean, what do you do? Um, head of waiters. I run uh, like Wayman and everything. Entrepreneur. You know what an entrepreneur is? No. Yazam. Yeah, Let's get out of here. What a crazy day that was. Why am I wearing a different t-shirt and different glasses? Because I went out with Shlomo Mervis last night and forgot to end the vlog. Forgot to bring the camera into the restaurant. It was an awesome meeting, but I got home and I crashed. So I'll end the vlog now. See you next week.